Hi, uh, this is Liam Andrews, President of Futsal Great Britain Association. Welcome to my Twitch channel and my YouTube account. Now, today's video is going to be on how do we develop multi-directional players and how that is going to affect our match day experience as either a player or as a coach or manager. So, today we will start with the foundation phase and today... The first, well, we're going to start with a classic here. So the first session that we're going to choose is King of the Ring. Now, whether you're a player or you're a coach, I'm pretty sure all of you have come across what uh, King of the Ring is before. But if you haven't, then I'm going to break down to you what you need to do anyway. So, um, okay, so here is King of the Ring. You have, uh, it don't have to be three, it can be as many as you want, but just for this, we're gonna say three. Three players with a ball each, and their job is to try and kick somebody's ball out of the area or the ring. So it's normally a circle shape, but we're just gonna do square just for argument's sake for today. Um, this is a great foundation phase um, exercise to do. You know, anyone from who's starting football from the very first time that, you know, three, four, um, all the way up to 11, 12. This is a really, really good exercise. You can also do this as a, a, a fun warm up for the for the older age groups and open age group if you want to. Um, but obviously, predominantly, this is really, really good for the foundation age group. Now, why would I pick this one for multi-direction and for the specifically the foundation age group? Now, I would pick that purely because there is loads of touches on the ball and we will talk about quite a lot about the 360 degree awareness okay now this this um, session has exactly that so we're going to go on to animations to start with so we're going to start with a 2d animation and then we're going to work our way up to a 3d animation for anyone who is uh, wondering what these players are doing um, I'm going to expand on this session with um, the greens in a minute so don't panic um, it's freezing. Okay, that's probably just a little bit of uh, a connection issue, but I do apologise about that, guys. Um, I do apologise if it is freezing. But anyway, okay, so we're going to carry on. So, um, we're going to go animation. Now, if anyone is watching for the first time and you are a coach, please remember always to click to frame two first. If you carry on with frame one and then you try and move stuff around, you're not going to stay with your uh, first image. So this is my first image, now I'm going on to frame two. Now, whatever I do after that is going to, um, is going to act as the animation. So, players are going to dribble their ball. They're trying to use their skills, moving the ball. Some of them, you know, will have different tactics, playing a bit more conservatives, uh, conservatively. Some players will try and, you know, run away. So we're going to say this player is going to try and run away. I just say he runs away. He's a bit of a scaredy cat. But these guys are ready to go at it. Now, player four. Let's try to do a turn. He's made a mistake. Player three is now going to kick his ball out. So that means player four, sadly, is out of the game. 
Now, I'm not a big fan of this this game in regards to what's just happened there, um, but I'm going to show you a way around of it uh, around around it in a minute. So player three is really starting to try. He's really attacking. He's really confident. He really wants to get that ball back. I'm just making it, just drawing this out a little bit. But three has given up. He's he's just going to leave his ball. We'll kick that one out. So player three is our winner. So we're going to have a quick look at this to start with. We'll go speed two. They're moving the ball around. Player four gets his ball kicked out, unfortunately. They keep moving it around. Player three decides that he's going to kick the ball out and leave his ball on, the on his own. Like I said, this is fantastic to get loads of touches on the ball for the foundation phase. Now, I'm going to play this again, but a bit slower because I want to break down some of the things that I'd be thinking as a coach. So the awareness, you know, is that player thinking about other players that are around him? So two has showed really good awareness mm -hmm. to move away, okay? Um, it's freezing again, is it? Guys, I do apologise about the freeze freezes. Um, it's not a lot I can do about it. I have bought a new... Uh, internet cable to stop stop that happening um, I will get people to have a look at that for me when this stream finishes but unfortunately there's nothing I can do um, so uh, thanks Darius thanks Kane thanks TTV Ace Horizon for joining the chat as well um, but yeah like I said number three is uh, number two is showing great awareness here moving away from the play um, Four has made a mistake and three has just kicked it out. Player two is being aware of all of his different surroundings to try and get away. Player three is, to be fair, has come up with a good tactic, leaving his ball away and going to straight away kick the ball away. But obviously, you could have eight players in this box, 10 players, 15, 20. It's always going to be 360 awareness and I think it's so important. Um, it's so important that players do get loads of touches on the ball in the foundation age, and they get to have loads of awareness. Now, this is why I like this game. But, and this is a big but, I'm not a huge fan of um, players getting their balls kicked out and then they're out of the game. So I am now going to show you really quickly how. I would personally coach this and then I'm going to show you how another coach has also adapted. Actually no, I'll tell you what, I'm going to show you how another coach has adapted this session to try and avoid the problem of the ball always going out and then people sitting out, okay? Um, TT Ace Horizon is Callum. Callum, thank you very much for tuning in buddy. Um, okay, so green. This is a session that I've seen Pete Sturgis do, so if you want to check him out on YouTube, he's a really good foundation coach, he works for the FA. Um, I don't particularly like this version, but it does have its benefits. I think with any session, if you um, want a specific benefit, then it's always good to, to change sessions around. I wouldn't personally use this one unless maybe I wanted to practice shielding the ball maybe. Um, but Pete Sturgis's version is three people with a ball, three people without a ball. Now this might be a potentially good um, idea to use maybe with the older age groups, maybe as they get in towards the end of the foundation phase, going into um, you know the next phase of their development. So greens come in. We're going to give them a two-minute timer in the session. It could be one minute, thirty seconds is up to you. But the reds. And the greens, if they get the ball back, have got to try and be aware of the space and get away from the greens who are trying to shut them down. Or if any defender shut them down, because obviously in a minute they might change. If the green quickly nips in, the green will dribble it away. Now, in this situation here, this is a really good way of developing um, particular players. Um, in regards to just being reaction, uh, sorry, reacting to a problem. Number four here could easily just try and shut the green down and get the ball, or there could be an option for a 2v1 to try and get the ball here, okay? 
So, you know, that again, you're working on the awareness and the player playing in multi-directions. You don't have to just go to that ball because he's the closest one to you. Can you try and look around, be aware of your surroundings and play in multi-directions? So multi-directions isn't just what you do with the ball, it can also be what you do without the ball, okay? So, he's tried to turn, he's not checked his shoulders, so the green is now going to take that ball, but the, the red has seen that space open up and he's travelled in there. So the green is now going to take the ball away, green is seen that three has uh, taken the ball into space, they're going to double up here, green's noticed that there's a problem, so he's going to move in a different direction. going to try and play around with this a bit just so you can see um, and basically the game is after the two minutes whoever has the ball is in fact the winner if you want to get the tempo up tell them how long they've got left 10 seconds 20 seconds Going to really build that, uh, that um, you know, that excitement, and then the two minutes is finished. You tell the players who haven't got a ball to come out of the area, and the players that are in the area give them a massive round of applause. Um, and there you go. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Again, um, I have put a, yes, I have put an internet cable in. I don't know why it's not it's not working. To be honest with you. Um, but I'm glad you guys can still hear me. Um, let me s let me see if I can just fix that really quickly for you. I'm not sure if that will make any difference, um, but I have tried to fix the internet cable. Um, if, if the internet's bad, unfortunately, that's just what it is. Um, but I'll have a look at that. Um, but yes, so these three players have now no longer got the ball, and they've came out. Okay. Then the simple, um, the simple um, game is you then start the two minutes again, and then these players have got to get the ball back, and then whoever wins after the two minutes, the game is finished. Okay. So I'm gonna just take these greens out just for a. S oh, I know, no, actually, no, sorry, leave that. Um, we'll have a look at this in 3D, shall we? To anyone who hasn't seen the 3D animation yet, this is your chance to have a look. This is amazing for anyone who hasn't seen here. Have a look. All the different stadium. Um, this is absolutely fantastic to see it in 3D. We'll start with one. moving the ball around after the two minutes they then sit off and then they've won we'll speed it up a little bit good and then they are the winner so that's the 3d version and now um, I'll go back to the animation because I want to get rid of all the animations because I want to show you the next session so like we said we spoke about King of the Ring and we also spoke about how um, Pete Sturgis has also progressed this one to make uh, people not sitting out but this is my version so we're going to come out of animation just to create the box This one might be a little bit easier on the eyes, so I've taken off the, the lines. If you want to see how I did the lines, you click that one for the lines. You want to click that one for the lines. Um, we could also make it a circle if we wanted to, um, but we won't do that for now. Okay, so going on to the animation. This is my version. Um, sorry, I have forgot something. My bad. Ball each. 
of course, because that's the whole point of having King of the Ring. That's, that's to be honest, that's the only reason I don't like the, the Pete Sturgis version, is because people aren't actually touching the ball. Um, and especially with English players being quite negative with the ball in general, um, I want them on the ball. Okay, so, here we go. Ball each. My game is very simple. Your ball gets kicked out. You go to the next box. So, player three has his ball kicked out. It's really unfortunate. Hang on, let me get rid of that frame. His ball gets kicked out. It's really unfortunate. But instead of him sitting out and doing nothing, he travels to this box. Okay? He goes into this box. He plays around like everyone else. These guys have got a completely different space now and a different challenge. Because they've got two, they've got more space. So how do they adapt to that? These guys have now got less space. So how do they adapt to that? It's more game realistic for me personally. Um, but then let's say this guy gets kicked out. Comes in. He's got a whole new challenge. He's not against anyone. How would I coach this? Very simple. Can he practice his ball mastery on, on the floor and give him a 10 second spurt of a certain skill um, and then change the skill over? Or tell him to do kick ups and see how many times the floor bounces by the time someone enters his ring. Give him loads of praise. You're king of the ring, well done. She's king of the ring or queen of the ring. Fantastic, well done. And then, um, you know, you can give them challenges. Just because they've won, you can praise them up and you can give them a challenge, okay? So, um, but just for the animation, we're just going to show you what that looks like. Uh, my version of King of the Ring. Um, if any of you have any questions of what I've said so far, leave a comment below. Thank you for everyone who's following me at the moment. It's really, really appreciative. Um, but obviously, I'd love to hear some of your, uh, your thoughts and feelings as well about what I've said so far. Um, so leave some comments below. Okay, so Player two just wants to shut down player three. He's trying to be aware of his surroundings Player four is moving around They're just gonna start dribbling around just getting used to the ball. I Am gonna make the whole dribbling aspect a little bit more obvious than I did in the last one because you didn't really get to see a lot of dribbling and because this is the foundation phase it is really important that they are dribbling the ball around so I am going to emphasize this to start with so they'll all be a little bit more conservative to start with just so we can emphasize the awareness playing in multi directions and keeping the ball So I went a bit too far with the frames. It's really good for the players to play in multi-directional. Remember, you can also emphasize this point as a coach and as a player, it's also really important to, um, to be aware that if you're playing in multi-directions, your awareness has got to be good, your touch has got to be good, and you've got to think. So they're all playing in so many different directions. They're not just playing in one direction. But it only takes one mistake with the ball. Something starts to happen. So we've got our first victim. The ball's gone off the pitch. So, ooh, he's going to take a risk there, is he? We're straight across. Player number three needs to come to the outside. Player three's accidentally just overhit that. Player two could potentially punish him. Player 4 is going to play it safe, instead of kicking the other guy's ball out, he's going to play it safe.
player four is being aware of his space, just trying to move it around. And then he's going to go and protect his ball. Player four is now taking a dodgy touch. Player four again is showing great awareness to get away from the player that's trying to show him, uh, trying to tackle him. Green's gone to get his ball. Player two is ready to go and get some more people. Okay, so. Um, Got to try and get into that box as quick as he can. His ball is going to be kicked out. He's got to go and get it. He's trying to go and get the other guy out. Number three has learned from his last mistake. He is no way he's going to be kicked out again. He's not happy about it. So he's just going to try and stop that happening. Player three. Oh, player two wants to get away now. He's playing in a different direction, being multi-directional, remember? Okay, so we'll just keep it as that for now. Actually, we'll do one more frame. We're going to let the red get back in. So we'll have a look. So dribbling around, great dribbling ability. His ball was kicked out. So he's now taking it around to get into the other box. We don't want him running around the box. We don't want them to get in the way of other people or, you know, if people are out and they kick the ball away, you know what some kids can do when they're younger. I've already had my ball kicked out. That's not fair. So just to avoid conflict, a bit of drama, um, just tell them to go around the outside. And also as well, you, you, you're checking to see if they listen to instructions, if they can take on instructions well. Okay, so here we go. We are in the 3D animation. We're going to go really quick before. Let's see how it looks. Probably a bit too quick for me. So we'll slow it down. So we'll go to a two. Good ball mastery work. Loads of touches in the foundation age, remember. Fantastic stuff. Okay, and then we're gonna finish that session there because um, I think we've we've made the point about the foundation age, so that's fantastic. I am now gonna go on to a slightly different subject of uh, shooting. We're gonna go to a straight. Um, we're gonna go to ads really quickly, and I'll be back ready for the shooting drill. Okay, guys, if you've got any questions about what the sessions I've done so far, uh, please leave a comment below and I will happily uh, answer any of your questions. I'm just, as you can see, just getting rid of uh, the session that I did before so I can start doing some shooting exercises with you. Um, I don't want to, you know, um, I want to break down very slowly certain things that you can do with the foundation age and the older age. Um, we need some more equipment for this one, so we're going to get goalposts. Uh, we'll scroll down. I'm going to just double click that goal because I want to make it a bit bigger to emphasize my point. And because I've got the same size, I'm going to double it, but I'm going to change the angle of the goal. And we're going to work on one versus one. But because we want to work on multi-directional players, you can score in this goal and you can score in this goal. So it is making sure that there's going to be plenty of goals and players are reacting really quick to, uh, you know, really quick to, to get in the ball back and trying to take advantage 
of the situation they're in because to be fair goals should be flying in quite fast in this game um, you know it should be really easy to be honest with you um, the progression from there is you could have a goalkeeper to make it a lot harder for them to score but again they can still score in multi directions um, if I want to work on movement off the ball um, I can give you some tips in regards to that as well with the multi-direction. We'll go into that when we go into the slightly older sessions. Um, but going back to the 1v1s with no goalkeepers, I'm just going to click this a second because I'm going to change the angle of the goalpost. Now, I just want to shout out um, a coaching company called First Step Soccers. This is where I got this idea from. So a big shout out to First Step Soccers who train a lot of um, toddlers and the foundation age. I think their oldest age group is nine that they work with now. Um, I saw them do a session where they turn the goals around. Now again, it's stopping them just smashing the goal straight away, it's getting loads of touches on the ball, and you can still go multi-direction because you can score in either goal. So they could be running down the wing here, just move that ball out of the way, he could run, red tries to shut down, quickly turn, go towards that goal, he's going all the way, get this guy out of the way, going all the way around. Red runs around the goalpost, he gets there in time, so the green quickly turns the other way. So it's making them multi-directional. Now the red could get really fed up and run this way, the green could use the goalpost to his advantage, cutting in, you know, running diagonal, running backwards, running sideways. There's loads of ways around it. Okay, he's defending here, could he go around the goal? You know, remember with, we, we want players to be Three, 360 degree angles so the keepers don't want to come back their awareness has got to be 360 degrees so again fantastic session for the foundation age it also could be quite a fun warm up for the older age groups um, but that's another way of doing it for the foundation age groups okay so this session that I'm going to do now is I'm just going to throw these away throw the ball away Keep a couple of spares just here, just in case. Yeah, we'd love to have balls, have spare balls on the pitch, so if for any reason they go out. Normally I'd spread them around the pitch, but just for this exercise we're gonna. So we'll have a goalkeeper, two players, two players. No, hang on. Two seconds. We'll have three out the pitch, sorry. And we'll have a goalkeeper. Another goalkeeper. And then what I'm going to do is bring out some more goalposts. Now the goalposts don't actually look that good in 2D, but when you do them again in 3D, they look sick. So this time we've got, we're going to go for two goalposts, uh, sorry, four goalposts. We make two, should I say, and we have four goalposts. Now, the objective here: we've got four goalkeepers, four goals, score in a 360-degree pitch. So your awareness to dribble, to pass, to shoot should be 360 degrees. Okay. So. Um, I just wanted to say for everyone who is still watching, thank you very much. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying um, the live stream so far. If you've got any questions, please pop them um, in the in the in the box below. Um, but yeah, so let's get back to the shooting session. So uh, I'm going to go into animation. Uh, remember, always click to the next one. Um, okay, so they all need to spread out, really. Um, sorry, I'm going to get rid of that frame. I'm going to spread them out before I get to frame two. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we... Remember, playing multi-directional is not all about just passing. You can, in this session, you can really go through the phases of play. You can go through um, some of the basics, width, depth, how do you help your player on the ball, how do you dribble in small areas, 
The Reds are trying to shut down the space. And if they're really creative, boom, straight over there. He's traveling to this goal. Reds are going to try and shut down nice and quick. Green's going to be cheeky here. Taking it away. That might sound negative, but actually, it's not stupid. They're trying to make the pitch a bit small. The Greens are trying to make the pitch big. Bang! Straight into here. You know, you're, you're working on short passes, you're working on long passes. And then, my favourite, Gulazzo! So, uh, sweaty goal. We can talk about our tactics in regards to shooting. Um, you're passing in different directions, you're dribbling in different directions. And when the keeper gets it, this is what I was talking to you about, building on um, movement off the ball now. I'd be saying to my players, or to my goalkeeper specifically, do not pass the ball to any player that does not move off the ball. When you're looking to pass to someone now, you are looking specifically for movement off the ball. You are not looking for players that are standing still. So you're rewarding the players for the hard work, the multi-directional movements, and their listening skills. So the keeper has decided he's going to play it to the Reds. He thought player two work, uh, moved really well. Player two can go straight towards that goal and score if he wants. So that's what he's going to do. And Greens have got to try and get goal side. Now I know that's not realistic it necessarily. Greens have learnt from the last mistake of Reds of shutting down too quickly. I want to emphasise the dribbling side of things. And then go on to the passing. Because we have done some beautiful passes already to be fair. But can that red get out there with individual technique? It's not all about passing. Tika Taka passing all the time. Sometimes just dribbling there, into there. Bang! Now he's got a fantastic pass. And then... Gulazzo! Another opportunity to score. Keeper gets the ball. All of a sudden, here we go. Player's got to move the ball again. Bang, bang, bang. There you go. They're not really moving enough, so the keeper's not throwing it out yet. The movement's got to be absolutely brilliant. It's so important to get the players to move in all multi directional movements not just the one that's convenient for them. In this session you'll probably notice as well a lot of your players will try and roll it to the front man but if, if the movement is really good can they throw it straight in there? And multi-directional players as well. His back, toward, his, his back could be towards goal, could he throw it in the air, overhead kick, bang and guess what? Gulazzo! Loads of praise for that player. He's feeling amazing. It's different to your average way of, of scoring and playing. Um, but it's fantastic because player number four has just worked really hard off the ball. He's moving in multi-directional multi ways. Keeper's thrown it. Bang. He has scored. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at that in case number two. Remember, he's trying to move off the ball to try and... Uh, in order to try and get away. He's laid it off, sprayed the pass diagonally. He's moving away as well. This time it's a parallel pass down the line. Another parallel and then a Gulazzo! Keeper's got the ball. He's looking for movement off the ball. They're still moving in multi-directional ways, remember? They're not just running forward back, forward back. Running away, trying to keep moving in multi-directional ways with the ball. He finds that little bit of space to pass, then he's passed it, and we've got another Gulazzo moment. And then the players are moving off the ball again, multi-directional, checking their shoulders, bending the knees, straight away the keeper plays it straight 
into, well, it was supposed to go into number four, wasn't it? But obviously I didn't frame that right. But let's pretend it, well, let's say it just went to number three and he did a bicycle kick and it went in. And then a Gulazzo! So, fantastic work and loads of movement off the ball. They are playing multi-directional. And now I want to work on how that is going to affect your team on a match day. Okay? Now, whether you are a football coach or you are a futsal coach, it does not matter in the slightest because the theme, the basics of when the player has got the ball is exactly the same. Okay? It's so important. If you can work on this at a young age, it gives them such a big advantage. Um, so... Uh, dry some lap. I'm glad you're still watching. Uh, Shadow Enigma. Yes, I do have an internet cable. It's just not, uh, we've, to be fair, we've got a lot of people on our um, Wi-Fi at the moment, so that might be why we've got a bad connection. Okay, so uh, get rid of those goals. Get rid of those goals. Uh, we need to get rid of some players as well. So we we'll get rid of one goalkeeper. Get rid of one goalkeeper. A player here, uh, sorry, goalkeeper there, goalkeeper here. Three, three, three. One, two, three. Get another player in there. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Give him another player. Five. Okay, so this is how a multi directional player can affect. Team now ignore some of the tactics that's being played, we are just focusing on whether they are playing multi-directional or not. So we're going to go to animation, replay, goes back, straight away you're expecting player number 5 to run straight away, okay? I'm not. For the sake of the video, I'm going to see if he can try and tuck in there. He's trying to be positive. Greens are looking at the principles of play, making their defence compact. Five is not wanting to give a ball, uh, the ball away. The Reds are making Bowman on runs. It's so important as well that the reds are also giving width and depth. This allows your player to hold on that ball a little bit longer whilst the greens are trying to shut down. Sometimes we are absolutely obsessed with pass, pass, pass. And I've got no problem with players passing either, by the way. I've got absolutely no problem with it whatsoever. Whatsoever. But there is a time where holding on to that ball, having that little bit of composure, whether it's a second, whether it's 30 seconds, it can give a lot of composure to your team. I love players, right, that have the confidence to not worry about going backwards. They can dominate this space here. They're not worried about an immediate threat. They are happy to hold the ball. Let's be honest, that's the reason the Cruyff term was invented. To move in multi-directional ways. So, it's quickly cut. Loads of people can go, not in there, not in there. You build the players up from a young age that they can do that, they'll, have to, they'll be comfortable enough to play like that. And to be honest with you, 
give the ball away at that young age. If this is young, the ones we're teaching, who cares? They will learn in time when to do it, when not to do it. But again, you're trying to you're trying to move the opposition. By doing that, you're just taking two players out of the game. We need to come across now, and look at that. The gaps are now slowly going to start to appear. And this is where. This is just a selfish thing at the moment. I'm trying to get him for that post. I, I like, this is because it's futsal. I like them to have three up front so I can emphasize this point whilst they're playing. But again, right, okay. They're quicker, they're stronger than us. They've got in. We need to do that there. We've got in. There's absolutely nothing wrong. Turning back. Your players are confident enough, they will keep the ball, moving the ball in multi-directional ways and they will eventually find a pass. Now my example to this, before I go into the animation with you guys, my example to this all the time is can you get the movement of the ball with a football and without a football in a football match or a futsal match like when they're playing bulldog when you're seeing a player playing bulldog they run backwards they run forward they run sideways they run diagonal a whole 360 degree of they're still playing a one directional game they're going from one box to the next and they've got a runner without being tagged but all of a sudden they move in all these different directions why can't they do that with a ball you got someone ru running at you, why can't you turn backwards? Why can't you go right? Why can't you go left? Why can't you go right and then quickly go left? You know? It's so important that some of the very core things of when you see kids when they play, that's what they should be doing when they're playing football and futsal. And if we stop telling them what to do all the time and give them some good guidance and relate it back to what they naturally do with other things, then you're on to a winner. Okay, let's have a look. So he's testing the defence already, he's forcing them to be, you know, a little bit more compact, he's forcing them to move just by a couple of multi-directional movements. Players, instead of just running straight away, they're doing the movement mechanics of moving around, going forward, coming back. This player is trying his hardest, he's trying to find a pass, he couldn't find it forward. So he tried, so, you know, he moved the opposition around, he created gaps. Great movement off the ball. Bang. And Golazzo! Now we're going to move it to 3D. Because we love the 3D. I love the 3D. But because we're doing something slightly different, I'm going to change the camera angle. So we'll go from here to start with. We'll go a bit higher so we can see it a bit better. And we'll go with the two. He's moving around, he's trying to move it, uh, he's, you know, he's moving the opposition, he's making them uncomfortable. Some great movement mechanics from the out, out uh, wingers. Again, he's testing the defence, he's trying to move, he's trying to pass it forward, he can't, so then he plays it out to the winger. And it's created gaps, then the other person to play it into the middle. His player's trying to, to attack, he couldn't, he keeps moving, again he's created more gaps, we've had someone on the post, bang, he has scored. I want to do it slower so I can break it down a bit more. So straight away he's passed it, but he's going backwards. Nothing wrong with that. He's tried to get into the gap. He's tried to be positive. He couldn't, so he stepped back. He could have used a Cruyff turn or outside cut, whatever it is. He's taken the defence away. Now he's running to a different direction. The defence have got to follow him. He's now taking him on a different direction, shielding the ball, using different types of skills, and he's now left, uh, laid it off. So he can now run 
up the pitch. Great movement mechanics. They're spinning off and making their runs rather than just running straight back. They're showing good multi-directional movements. It's more of a flow in the game, less, less chance of injury. Now this, look what this player does now. He's taking the ball away to create the angles bigger. He's taking them in different directions. Backwards, left, right. And he's continuously keep changing. But look at the gaps he's just created. Now he's created a gap to play it straight in to the striker who has created gaps for himself. Quick pass into short space. Now we're going to be attacking. Try and get to the goal. Greens have been too quick to get back in. Right, what do you do now? Right, I'm going to move the ball to somewhere else. Someone else is moving off the ball. Fantastic work from this guy, which has created the gap to him thinking, okay, do I go here? Do I go there? And he's created for the Golazzo moment, which is what we live and breathe for. So, this is what, um, this is the session of how I think, um, if you train multi-directional players, you are creating different angles. You're creating players that are confident without and with the ball. You create multi-directional players, you will get a better team. You'll get a better individual, you'll get a better team. C key things, work on the check in the shoulders, work on the ball mastery of keeping the ball and being comfortable with the ball. Movement mechanics, what sort of movements are involved in what you want to you work on on your tactics or your training sessions and let them be creative with it don't slam them because they've made a mistake because they're trying to be multi-directional players you slam a player because it's not quite worked out but they've been trying to be creative by being multi-directional praise them praise them praise them and then you'll get the benefits later on a strawberry before it's fully grown tastes disgusting but when you give it time, give it patience, give it love, it is the best fruit in the world. Okay, thank you very much for um, watching today. I hope you guys have all enjoyed it. Um, there's a lot of passing um, elements to this that we spoke about. Loads of dribbling and loads of shooting. If you guys have enjoyed today's video, please, please, please... Follow our Twitch, subscribe to our Twitch, subscribe and follow on our YouTube. If you want to start interacting with us, please get involved in our Facebook, our Instagram and our Twitter. Today's session was brought to you by Tactical Pad. Tactical Pad is a great software. I hope I've given you a couple of things that you can look at um, in regards to what Tactical Pad can offer you as a coach or a player. Um, if you want to buy a tactical, uh, if you want to buy a tactical pad, there is loads of different versions. You can get football, you can get futsal. Um, I think there's basketball, handball, and stuff as well. So there's different sports for you guys to get. If you want a link for it, please go onto our Twitch channel, onto our panels, have a look, click the picture of tactical pad, and it will take you to their website. It will also give you a bit of a description on our panels about what tactical pad is um, and if you click onto the tactical pad website that will be able to help you get there you do have to pay for tactical pad but to be honest to get us a, a, a software as good as this it deserves to be paid for um, so make sure you get tactical pad it's a brilliant software to use if you do have any questions about tactical pad leave them in the comments below and I'll happily answer it in the next video um, or you can obviously, like I said, um, talk to us on our social media platforms as well about Tactical Pad. Um, anything else? If you would like more content from me, please leave me a comment um, on, our, on our Twitter and our YouTube. And if you want to see more content from me, let me know what you want to see and I will happily break that down for you. So thank you very much for watching, guys. My name's Liam Andrews. I'm the president of... Futsal Great Britain Association and I'm out.